Bem-vindo ao Musefo Young Leaders. Vamos continuar a falar sobre o envolvimento da juventude e o tema específico de hoje é juventude como líder de transformação. E o nosso convidado de hoje é o ex-líder da Aliança Democrática, um dos principais partidos de oposição na África do Sul, o Sr. Musse Maimane. É com, é, é com ele que vamos, portanto, nos próximos minutos, dialogar e puxar, é, portanto, algumas opiniões sobre aquilo que é a sua visão do empoderamento, portanto, da juventude, numa altura em que, de facto, há um crescente desafio é, que se impõe aos jovens, é, sob o ponto de vista da sua participação e envolvimento, portanto, em todos os níveis, portanto, de decisão, portanto, política dentro dos países em desenvolvimento, quer na África do Sul, quer Moçambique, mas particularmente vamos falar sobre o nosso país, Moçambique. Uh, good evening, uh, my money. How are you doing? Good evening and uh, good evening to fellow Africans. It's my great privilege to be here and thank you for having me. Okay, um, Issa Maiman, today we're going to talk about youth as a leader of transformation. And the first question that I have is, what the best way uh, to take advantage uh, to the ensuring the rights of the youth uh, of our region to boost their participation in decision-making processes, uh, as well as establishment of the national policy priorities? I think... Living in the continent of Africa gives us the best opportunity to be able to mobilize young people. As part of a developing continent, naturally the median age falls lower and lower. The majority, more than half of our citizens in the continent are young people, which is a very important uh, uh, distinction. Unlike in other European states or other parts, you discover very quickly that Africa is a young continent. Secondly, I think our educational outcomes need to get better in order to create young people who are well-informed, well-educated in the culture of human rights and their participation in the defense thereof. And when I think about our region of Southern, there can be no denying the fact that their future leaders ought to be leaders today who are already building a sense upon which, A, they're innovating around educational outcomes, they're innovating around entrepreneurial outcomes, but also are very deliberate in being able to hold their respective governments to account. And I think as a region, if I've seen anything, is that if we can build young people who are able to say, how do we build an Africa of the future? How do we build a Mozambique of the future? Because accountability is going to be different, our global platform is going to be different, and therefore my urge and agency is that young people need to get themselves well informed, Secondly, they need to become democratic participants. It cannot be that whilst Africa is a young continent, many of our leaders and our presidents are over the age of 60. I want to urge that young people ought to participate in that. Thirdly, we've got to fight for reformations of economic inclusion, particularly in the region, because ultimately it doesn't matter what position you fulfill, what matters is that you have a role to play and young people have a crucial one to play. And I would urge more than anything, that young people must be standing on the ballot boxes, mobilizing youth, so that we can bring change to particularly our region and ultimately to the continent. Step that youth uh, must take uh, to guarantee their uh, participation on uh, pro uh, decision-making processes. Absolutely, and, and decision-making processes don't just begin with just the electoral processes, right? Like every year, young people need to be on the ballot paper so that people can vote for them, but also how they themselves participate in, the, in democracy. One of the big worries that we've got here in South Africa is that actually, even though um, citizens are registered to vote, the most under-registered population to vote is young people. They don't participate in democracy over, you know, less than 25% of them actually are registered and actually turn out to vote. So my invitation here is that the region itself must accelerate more young people getting involved in that first decision-making process. But the second one is in their communities, their streets, their events. Uh, the structure of government allows for participation. What I'm arguing for is that if young people come up with good ideas about the future, then they can advocate and lobby for those. You cannot just simply be making decisions in an abstract version. You make decisions on the basis of saying your participation is about the future, where it's got to go. And leadership is about articulating a preferred tomorrow 
for people, something that everyone can gravitate towards and young people can do that. But I don't want to lose track of the entrepreneurial participation of young people. If young people are not building businesses of the future, they are going to struggle in being able to exert influence. When I was involved, even in Parliament of South Africa, and still involved now in building one South Africa, we announced the fact that in every structure of our decision-making process, young people must be there. We have executive meetings that do not work unless young people are in the room to make decisions and to contribute, and then to live with the outcomes of what happens. So my invitation even around here in this conversation is that young people need to be uh, that they need to be at the table. It's not like they are leaders of tomorrow, they are leaders today, but they need to be at the table with ideas and ideals for the future and a preferred picture of what tomorrow can look like. Okay, according to the reality of many African countries, uh, do you think is that the correct way to do democracy? Absolutely. I think, you know, we, we've been... Democracy is not perfect. It's got its own limitations, you know, and... Um, but it's the only system, it's the one system we've got at the moment. And I think young people have an opportunity to be there, considering that they've got the numbers as a start. And secondly, they've got the skills to look at a fast-changing world. The one thing that young people have is agility. And I think any leader, leaders do not arrive at the table without an idea. But that idea must be challenged, shaped, and given the agility to respond. So young people's participation ought to be one that comes out and says in a democratic process they will certainly participate, but also in how the vision of the country is crafted. Many leaders in Africa do not hear the voice of young people. They are not agile around environmental issues. They are not agile around youth employment issues. They are not agile around youth educational issues. And I think our young people need to be, at, particularly in the continent, be able to participate. And I'm inspired. I'm inspired by leaders like Bobby Wine in Uganda. Here's a young African who's contributing there. I'm inspired by the diaspora of Africans all across who are saying, how do we rebuild the continent of Africa so that we don't look at the next decade of Africa as a dark continent, but as an Africa that can contribute? I'm inspired by the innovative young people in countries like Kenya who are coming up with tech solutions that are able to drive the decision-making process in the business community there. And ultimately, even in agricultural sectors, tourism sectors, young people are the ones who are intercontinent, interconnected globally and also in the continent, but also regionally focused in being able to make inputs into their own uh, countries and member states. Okay, uh, the way that uh, the public policies are being formulated in many uh, African countries sometimes seems like uh, uh, the leaders, the political leaders, they use the youth uh, just to, gain, to, to, to achieve the political gains. So what's your point of view? Look, again, when I raise the point about having an articulated position about a preferred future, Leaders, or it doesn't matter how old the leader is, they need the constituency to advocate for particular reforms. And I would urge young people that ultimately they mustn't allow themselves to be, to be captured by old leaders who simply need them for their votes, not for their ideas. We must never in Africa vote for dictators. We must never in Africa vote for people who don't have ideas about the future for young people. And there should never be a cabinet in South Africa, in Africa, that doesn't have a strong component of young people. Because if you don't achieve that, you're going to end up in a situation where young people vote, surrender their power, and let leaders go ahead with the business of what they're going to do. So I'm urging young people to say, it's time to take over your own governments now. It's time for you to have a stronger voice and a stronger view. But to achieve that is going to be a question of better ideas. We've got to show that we are conscious about the future, and those ideas have to be around education, around entrepreneurship, around our environment, around our economies as to how we can build inclusive economies. But those ideas have to be about how do we transverse a global society where Africans must respond to it. So to me, the urgency of the call at the moment that is before us is that actually young people have an opportunity to lead, but they must lead with ideals and ideas.
Okay, uh, using active and participatory citizenship of the youth, um, what are the possible paths that should be taken to transform our society into one that promotes and defends um, democratic values and pr principles favorable to inclusive and sustainable development? Young people, first and foremost, must become people who say, when we draft economic policies, you know, if you rewind the movie, even of Mozambique and various countries like that, you discover that there was change of governments and freedom narrative from oppressors and dictators. Now the conversation is about how do we build economic freedom? And I think young people need to be able to frame and lead that conversation. So that's one of the most practical ways to start off with. The second is, I think young people need to be defenders of human rights and how we work within that space. And one of the key issues is about how are young people as lawyers able to not only protect the constitution of their countries, but ultimately being able to safeguard the culture of human rights. And I want young people who are able to stand up in a legal campaign to be able to say, we cannot allow people who subvert uh, political outcomes, subvert electoral outcomes. We need young people who are able to stand up and say, we're not going to succumb to this, and we will defend democracy and human rights in a way that's possible so that no one can expand their terms, etc. And part of it is about being educated, but being constitutionalists. But furthermore, young people must build networks. I think that one of the things that we need in Africa is African leadership that is young, a cohort of young people who can partner together across various spaces because they way they can help support one another in bringing out new ideas. Our continent must be vibrant in terms of energy, in terms of how we deal with certain environmental issues, how do we deal in agriculture and tourism spaces. And this requires a network across. We cannot be thinking just as countries. You can't just be thinking as a Mozambican or as a Malawian. Or as a, you must think as Southern Africa, because that way we can create the right investment tools, the right financial aid, to be able to give forth ideas. And I think more than anything, the safeguarding of democracy isn't just what we do at the ballot, but it also has to do with the economic infrastructure, the educational infrastructure, and young people are key parts of that. And so my, we've got to build a new leadership, uh, leadership cohort of young people who are able to have a vision for their countries. And let's network them across the continent and build this one Southern Africa where leaders are brought out, leaders can advocate, leaders can be activists, and young people can hold our governments to account. Okay, uh, but what, what can be done to uh, stimulate and enhance um, the youth leadership as an inducer of the social change? Yeah, and that's what I'm, I, I keep saying. What yeah. we need to do is create those partnerships, create those networks, and give the protection. Because when a young person speaks out, if you went to another country as I was in Zambia, you find young people who are activists and they get arrested and get locked up. Their freedom will depend on who speaks for them in other countries. We need to be able to have the right financial resource to protect young people in Zimbabwe. In all these various countries, we've got to be able to build a culture of young people who are able to defend democratic and we've got to give them the space. I feel worry when I hear young women who want to participate in democracy, but they don't feel safe because their countries cannot protect them. That is unsustainable. We need young people in media spaces so they can communicate messages. But more than anything, we need a, a Africa-wide, a SADC-wide leadership cohort that is accountable, that makes sure it can train young people so that we can communicate these messages. Okay, um, there is a general perception that um, many young people are being excluded due to uh, geographical asymmetries. So, in your point of view, what, what kind of public policy must be developed to promote the inclusion, equal opportunities, education, health, housing, decent employment, and entrepreneurship? Yeah. Once again, you know, when I speak about a subject wise, okay. wide, cohort leadership group. We must add support to other young people in other development parts. Why should an African entrepreneur have to go find money from another country, from another place, whereas Africa needs to have a national venture capital that allows for investment in all of these ideas and ideals that young people can have? 
How is it that when young people get involved politically, they can advocate for policies that not only are dependent on the state, but are able for themselves to be able to build the appropriate housing opportunities, educational outcomes. We need to be able to migrate blended learning in Southern Africa so that education isn't just dependent on the country. You know, if a young, if a young Mozambican is not getting a, a good enough education in Mozambique, the internet allows them the space to be able to study with anyone in the world. Why are we not creating yeah, universities that traverse uh, all of these regions so that we can offer online content so that young people can qualify, learn the right schools, so that they can be able to contribute to the sustainable development of Africa. So you, you, last... you, mean, you, mean, you, mean, you mean that it's, it's very important to invest in human capital? Is that, is that right? Absolutely. Investment. That's, that's, one, that's one of the ways of developing human capital, but what I'm saying is that it's not just human capital, it's financial capital, because young people get hampered in their ideas by not having the financial resources, but social and support capital. Where are mentors to young people who are able to say to them, you want to stand in political office, I'm going to mentor and help you so that you can become the best leader possible. We cannot be raising a generation of African leaders who are without mentorship, who will repeat the same mistakes as we've done in the past. Okay, um, another point is uh, uh, the finance. The youth do not have money to develop their own project. Uh, so where do they can uh, find the money to, um, to, to grow, to develop their projects? Yeah, one of the conversations we've been having even as fellow African leaders is to say, we need a regional development finance so that it talks to projects of young people. So if you look at the African Union's Africa 2063 vision, part of it is about youth sustainability. And my question to even the African Union and in the SADC region is where is the financial capital to put this on the table? We need to be able to build. That's why the network of African leaders in SADC is vital because then you can create the venture capital so that we can put money into young people so that they can do them. If they're only dependent on their governments, it is no way for them to be able to achieve the goals that they want to achieve, let alone the financial resources that comes with it. And so I'm calling even for African banks, African development banks, that part of their funding portfolio and their policy position must be one that says we will favorably look at youth entrepreneurs so that they can develop the work that they need to do. Okay. Um... Uh, Musa Maiman has been inspiring the youth in the African uh, countries. So now we're going to talk specifically uh, about your experience as a leader of a political parties and uh, what you, uh, you did to achieve this uh, status. Look, I mean, I don't have to tell any young person, and many African young people would know this hard work is the key, but conviction. As a young person, if you don't have a vision and a conviction for yourself, you're going to struggle. You're, it doesn't matter what position you end up in, know why you are in that position to do something. So when I started in political activism, as a child in Soweto, I grew up in an era where they just released President Nelson Mandela. We knew very clearly that the struggle was going to be, how do you build a South Africa for all, but also to build a non-racial future or a non-tribal one that is not discriminatory on the basis of tribalism, culture, religion, all of those things. And I began along a journey of bringing people together with a vision of saying, Africa must prosper. And it's been a journey. It's been a journey where we started off in local government, provincial government, then national government as leader of the opposition, and not having fear. I had to, at times, look at the president of the country and tell him, this is wrong, and we're going to ask you to account and building a network of people who begin to follow the leadership. And, and ultimately, it's through that hard work, that conviction, and that sense of accountability that allows you to go through from one place. There have been many times where I failed at certain things. I'll be the first one to admit that. But it doesn't mean failure is fatal. All it means is that it gives you an opportunity to do something more, work harder, and continue to say, which is the network of people you want to bring together. And I would urge that uh, the idea such as Mosefo, such as the various platforms, let us build a leadership cohort of young people who can support each other, teach each other lessons where they've said, hey, this was hard or this was, we can do it like this. But ultimately, 
be able to say what is our vision for uh, an Africa that is prosperous. Okay, um, what does it mean to have, uh, for example, Mus Maiman as a leader of one of the import important uh, political parties uh, in South Africa, uh, in terms of inspirations to new generations? Okay, in simple terms, if I, if I can do it well, many African young people can do it. What's important is let's keep working hard. And so for me, Uh, that it was possible for, for, for me to lead uh, in that way and to lead the continent, uh, at least the South African Development um, part a Partnership for, for position leaders in the region, that was a great privilege and still is a great privilege. It's not about your age sometimes that matters, it's about your ideals and your convictions. And if you're good enough, you're old enough. Let's not let young people believe they have to wait until they're old. If you are good enough, you are old enough. And you've got to work hard on it. Yeah. Okay, in South Africa, for example, it seems like um, uh, there are persistence of the uh, asymmetry, geographical asymmetries. For example, when we see uh, the youth from, uh, for example, uh, Cape Town, uh, there's, there is a kind of differentiation of their engagement in, uh, in uh, political processes. So how do you think South Africa uh, have to do to create Uh, the balance from, uh, in order to resolve these geographical asymmetries? Yeah, look, one, I think South Africa, and I want to apologize on behalf of the people of South Africa, in many ways, uh, xenophobia, or whatever you want to call it, or Afrophobia, is um, appalling, and I apologize as a South African, and I think... Um, it's important that young people understand that we are all part of the same continent. And secondly, what I really believe we need to do is be able to share universities because their ideas are shared. This stops us from thinking just for our own little communities. So when I think about UCT, uh, which is the University of Cape Town, I have to answer the question, how many African students are there? Because then you can broaden the vision. Of course, border travel and control will be a reality of our lives because there's a tax base that we need to manage. But it's always going to be important that at our universities, there's an education that is shared, our information is circulated collectively so that in the long run, we can be able to say, look, we've been able to break down any divisions. Ideas translate beyond culture and we can mobilize together. But we've got to get there. And I think we've still got a long way to go in South Africa. has an important role to play in that as a fairly well-resourced country. But I think we can be doing it in partnership and be willing to learn from our African counterparts. That's why professors, leaders, various people who are in academic institutions can work. And then lastly, I think trade. You know, inter-trade within the Soviet region is going to be important. And as youth entrepreneurs start up, Their first place to look for business deals mustn't be to go to the U.S. or to China or to anywhere else. They must be looking at their fellow Africans because we can talk about common currencies, we can talk about common trade and common interests and look at our client base because we know what the climate is like, we know what the clientele is like. And I think as Africans we need to be able to charter a confidence in ourselves but a confidence in the region. So do you think that's the right platform that has to be created uh, as, um, to, in order to guarantee these um, uh, relations between the youth, for example, from Mozambique uh, to South Africa and vice versa? More. There needs to be more platforms of this nature, and I certainly think that this is one of them. But uh, we need to structure it better. I, I really have a vision where we can have a sadic wide conference of young people where young leaders come. Why, why, why should it be that the only people who are talking to African leaders are presidents like President Obama? Well, I'm a fan of President Obama, but truly we need African leaders who are speaking to Africans, who can bring them together. And I would urge that we need a broader platform, a sadic platform where we can get together and say, what does it mean for us to shape Africa 2030 to Africa 2040 and build a leadership cohort of young people who are able to say in our respective countries, 
we can collaborate together so that these values are translatable. And I think more must be done, and I would urge, even for the respective universities in the region, that we must gather together, build that cohort, build these platforms so that ideas can be shared and Africans can contribute to their country. Okay. To their country. Uh, this week uh, we are celebrating a, a International uh, Youth Day. So I would like to know from you what is the main message you would like to address to the young people? Africa is a young continent. Youth leaders are revolutionaries in the right sense of the world. Let us now, when a moment in our continent that requires us to provide better leaders, to liberate ourselves from liberators, to build economies of the future, young people must lead the discussion. So I guess when it's said and done, we have no one to wait for. We are the ones we've been waiting for. And I would urge young people, take up the baton, continue the struggle for freedom, but that freedom must be economic, educational, so that we can build an Africa that is prosperous. So in this youth month, this is not a time for your Afro generation to be lost. It is time for us to reignite a vision of a prosperous Africa. And I think it's possible, I think we can do it, and I would urge young people to get engaged with these issues so that whether it's our sisters who are vulnerable in many communities, they must be know that there's a freedom for them to participate in leadership and that collectively between brothers and sisters, we can make sure that our countries can prosper together. And that is a genuine goal. So do you think is it possible to have uh, uh, in, um, another... Nelson Mandela, for example, to unify um, nations in African countries? Absolutely. I think uh, this is a moment. And one of the mistakes President Nelson Mandela gave us a start. He gave us an opportunity to reconcile. Now we are in the net phase. It cannot be that when we think economically, we think only of our own countries. Uh, we must think broader. When we think about energy and the provision of energy, we must think broader. And therefore, now the reconciliation project and then Africa vision is an economic one. And I'm saying to many other people, let's get together, craft that vision. Because when you've got an economic vision for Africa, you can build a much more integrated society, freer nations. And the Nelson Mandela's are going to come in the next generation. And they are within us. And all I'm saying is, let us now begin to put work towards that. That's why what is happening in Zimbabwe cannot be ignored by young people in Mozambique, what is happening in Malawi, whatever the country is. We are all engaged with the issues that are taking place in the respective countries, and we must unite to fight that battle collectively because that's what leaders like Nelson Mandela recognized, that we're, if we want to go far, we must go together. And we, we, we now, in this moment, in this time, need to work together to be able to produce future leaders of that level. And they can't just be in politics. They must be in business. I mean, if I think about it, you know, the minerals in Africa sit on the ground. Why is it that we don't, we're not producing innovators and young people who say we are using our minerals to be able to bring about a revolution all over the world of minerals that are able to contribute? We must look at not only in politics, but in business, in education, in all sectors, in healthcare sectors, so that we can have young people who can develop. You know, it is powerful for me when I think that it was an African who invented rocket fuel that the Americans are using. But that story is not celebrated in the continent. We must celebrate it more. It is an African who was able to produce, uh, uh, you know, surgical uh, uh, transplants. And this is innovation in the healthcare sector because the needs are before us. It must be an African who is going to find the, how we deal with the effects of climate change. Because in Africa, we deal with it day to day. It's a reality of flooding in communities, etc. We must deal with it. And so even in the agricultural sector, our farmers must be better and young people must be able to lead that conversation. We have an opportunity as Africans. We mustn't be victims to leaders who are corrupt and dictate, and, and, and dictate to us what we must do. We can lead the baton and lead the way as young people. Okay. Musa Maiman, thank you very much for joining us in Mosef for Young Leaders. Uh, we hope you continually doing well and uh, we'll meet, meet each other in next opportunity. I will see you in, uh, in Mozambique soon. Okay, thank you and welcome.
Ok, e assim termina então a nossa conversa com o Moussa Maiman, que é o antigo líder da Aliança Democrática, um dos, países, um dos partidos mais importantes da oposição sul-africana, explorando, portanto, o seu pensamento sobre o envolvimento da juventude em várias esferas do domínio social, político e económico, numa altura em que a juventude é chamada, de facto, a dar seu contributo para o desenvolvimento inclusivo dos países africanos. E assim termina então o nosso Mosef Young Leaders. Até a próxima.